Hello everyone, um, welcome to my channel, this is the Motorcycle Rescuer channel, I am the Motorcycle Rescuer, my name is Charlie. Um, two projects today, well, kind of one project and one just fiddly bits that have been bothering me. Uh, on the mopeds, it's pretty much fine, it needs a carb that I've bought, I've bought a new carb because it's just easier than messing with an old carb, just chucking the new carb, tune it up and you're good to go. I was also considering repairing this panel but for 30 quid we got a brand new panel and that's going to just make the world of difference on this bike um, and as a final little touch We've also got a plug for that bit there, so actually this bike's going to look the part when it's done, and it's going to be great. It's only a, what is it, 2013 Sinus Harrier. They're great bikes, they run really well, they're pretty quick, they're pretty nippy. Um, and, yeah, and this one's in good nick. The Bobber. Uh, I want to get the Harrier up and running, I want to smash in the new carb, and then ideally, I want to get this to an MOT today. Uh, I, I have been considering just taking it to the MOT because it runs and rides as it is. But it would be nice to test it properly when it, with, um, with the new car being and give it a good run. It's a good 20 minute drive so we could do that. And then I'm not going to touch the panel here until later. That's unnecessary. And I do need to pop this panel here and put one bulb in. Which I'm hoping I have because I can't find many things open at the moment for that stuff. You know obviously we're in lockdown. Uh, hopefully my MOT centre is open, it stayed open all last lockdown for um, essential people to do their MOTs and I think that was great. So let's get on with it, let's think about what we're doing from here. I guess, I think carb in here. So guys, pop out the old carb like we've done. No issues there, quick and easy. And then we'll compare the new carb to the old. Now I didn't put in a carb specifically for this model. I um, I just kind of went with the flow. Now this looks fairly identical, except this diameter is a bit smaller than here, which isn't a huge issue, uh, depending on how small. This isn't a 50cc, this is a 125. Uh, I think this is gonna work perfectly. Uh, again, yeah, and, and it, these are all tuning things. So slightly bigger diameter there will let in more airflow or put more mixture into the engine, simple as that really. But nothing that will affect the 125 particularly. Uh, under these bolts here, people might be looking for the um, air fuel screw. We've got this one here, but I believe we have one under here as well, unless I'm wrong. Uh, that could have been the issue on that, to be fair. You have to drill out this copper plate and see if there's one underneath. I don't... I think maybe on this car one controls air and one controls fuel. Uh, technically, this should just be set up, ready to go. It should be at two and a half out, roughly. Um, it looks quite far out at the moment, so I might check that. But the first thing I want to do is get it on the bike and see if the bike starts and see if it runs any better without any messing. Sometimes, guys, that's the, you know, that's the answer. It's been base, it's been set in the factory probably baseline at two and a half or one and a half spins out and then we can look at small tweaking let's see if the problem was the carb to start with by dumping the carb on now, i'm not going to film it because it involves pushing that into one end pushing the airbox on the other and a couple of little bits the choke i need to wire up i'm gonna have to chop this one and wire it up and everything else is fairly straightforward there i got a, a new box of clips every now and again i I come short on these products and I think, oh God. Um, and I get online, I get on eBay and I, I do you know, I do a set like this and they last a while. These little ones are normally the ones I'm using, these kind of sets here. I, I don't really get these bigs, but they're all very handy. You've got to buy fairly good quality ones. They don't have to be amazing, 
but your kind of pound shop ones aren't particularly great guys they just don't hook they just don't do the job so if you're getting these um, clips get a fairly decent set if you can right let me dump this bad boy on and we'll see if it even starts up at this stage it will be cold it hasn't been started at all mm -hmm. so it will be interesting okay everyone let's take a look at what we've done we've got the new carb on now i talk to people quite a lot about upgraded carbs in this country always being better and one thing that comes up often is people say but they're the same you know they're chinese now when a bike comes through from china it has to meet extremely strict emissions controls and they absolutely bung up their carbs they absolutely max them out in regards to um, restricting them and that that causes problems now this carb this pair system or EGR or whatever you'd call it basically it recirculates gases and it slows the bike down and it's meant to run cleaner on this bike it is blanked off Okay, so we don't have air coming out here going into there. It's blanked off. That will be a performance upgrade. Um, I need to just check that this is a breather. Make sure no fuel comes out of there. I have wired up the new choke. The throttle cable is on. And we are nipped and tucked up. Um, take the wire. You can't have anything here that's letting air out. The bike won't run properly. So that's a blank off valve. Pull it on. Do it up. And we've got blank off. We got it all blanked off. I'm going to put my new clips onto here and here if this bike um, runs and appears to be okay. But first thing we need to do is, is check that it actually does. So let's pop the key. Um, it should fire up because it has the choke. Um, we do need to fill up the car with fuel. Cool. So um, we should have some fuel in the car there. And with a few magic turns off the key the button and then maybe a bit of throttle i expect this to fire up so let's get you a better angle let's see if this fires up it may it may not So that's that's some of the work done guys we are back to the same stage we were with the old car yeah so no issues there give it two minutes it's been sitting all week give it a minute to warm up let the fuel go round let it all sink and then we'll give it a rev and we'll see how it sounds from there i'll bring you back in a couple of minutes i'm not going to film the lot actually no let me take this time to talk about my youtube channel so at the moment um, I've been monetized now for just over a week. Um, I think over that week I've got about 1,200 clicks. I'm not sure what that means for adverts, but that means my it's been clicked 1,200 times. And that's equaled um, 20 pound or 20 dollars. I don't know what it's counting in, but it says 20. Uh, you can't get paid on YouTube unless you earn 100 or more. It won't transfer the money. And a part of me was hoping that um, the AdSense account will hold that money and will, so I can kind of store it up a bit in there and then do some sort of giveaway or something at the end of the year. That'd be quite cool. Uh, so that's how it works, guys. You set up this AdSense account. It's the only account you can use where I think, I think it's like a bank account. Um, when you get £100, it will either automatically transfer or you transfer it, and then it takes a couple of weeks to transfer. But I do want to kind of store some money up so yeah, so basically I've released, I think I've released four videos and it has equals £20. Now remember though, this does also include all the other videos as well that are on there. Um, they are also monetized unless you have any music or anything in your video that they've claimed. So I've got three or four videos that I'm not allowed to monetize because my phone rang and it was a certain song or something. Um, and it's too awkward for me to re-download that video and re-upload it. Elder, I am going to look into that. But, yeah, so be careful. If you're doing your YouTube channel, you can't have other people's music at all. 
Um, even some of the free ones you get on your editing software may not be allowed, and I didn't know that. I've got um, John, John Stone, from his channel, helping me quite a lot with the editing and stuff. Um, he's made me realise that YouTube have their own bank of music. I don't know if that's if you're monetized or not, but on the studio app, you can get their bank of music, which you're allowed to use. So I'll look into that a little bit more. So yes, anyone interested, I made about £20 last week, maybe 1200 clicks. I don't actually know because of the other videos, you see. So you don't, it's not huge amounts of money. Right, let's have a look. Let's try a little bit of quarter throttle. Ah, it feels better. It feels better already. Let's have a bit of half throttle. There we go, a bit of half throttle. Let's go full out. Guys, I'm not going to touch it at all. I'm going to leave the car alone. That's it, it's running, riding. I'll give it a bit of a test ride, make sure it's um, fully and strong. But for me, the carb and running issues on this bike are now sorted. Uh, if you do what I've done here with these wires, you have to tape them up because once they touch, they'll count each other and you'll have choke problems. So um, tape them up. It has to be electrically taped because it has to stop the electrical currents. Put your clips on all the suction things, make sure that they are blocked off. Um, that one is capped off. And then that's just an overflow pipe in case it ever overflowed, that's fine. Make sure you nip up your throttle cable, which I haven't done, I've just seen that there. There it is, hand touch, beautiful. And uh, yeah, this, this bike's fine, uh, good to go, I'll put them clips on, I'm going to chuck it all back together. Let's just check again, quarter throttle, half throttle, full throttle. That's a beautiful running bike guys, and like I said, the pair system, or whatever it's called on this bike, has been deleted. That's going to be an upgrade performance wise. That's great, that's stunning. This bike is good to go. A couple of spiders webs this morning, they're out to get me. Uh, ideally I'd like to get this under the jet wash, but it's too cold now for jet washes, and I can't be bothered. Uh, Lisa, the potential new owner for this bike, will be around soon, she's been unwell, we'll get to see this, this shocking fest that everyone's asking me about uh when you see it guys it isn't gonna look you're not gonna like think wow that's shocking it might look presentable i saw it in the pitch black if i'm being honest and it had a baby blue or night sky blue whatever you call it um but it looks hand painted to me so i don't know yet what my plan is i i think i'm, I'm considering getting a 50cc engine from ebay and putting it back in or I can buy a 50cc top end, piston, cylinder, valves, put that in, that, that's been done before. Um, maybe even a 70cc, so some kids got a bit of extra power. Um, but I don't know, guys. I, you know, this is all... Ideally, I'd, I'd buy a low um, mileage 50cc engine on eBay. It turns up in a crate, I slot it in, and that bike's natural. I'll give it a paint, I'll paint it black and get some stickers for it or something. And someone will have a nice 50cc bike, I think. I don't know yet until we see it. But like I said, Lisa's not well, so we haven't seen her, but I have heard from her. Um, I am looking forward to seeing the festival in the daylight. Now, ideally, I want to get this to an MOT, so I'm going to check the tyres. I've checked all the brakes and everything else. It all seems all right. So uh, I might be popping this back together and seeing if I can get it to an MOT. So, everyone, I brought you here to show you uh, a couple of things. First of all, Getting to the lighting system on this bike is ridiculous. You've got to take every single nut and screw out of the front to pull it forward, and that's shocking. Secondly, and bear with me with this, right? There is no bulb for high beam. There is no bulb for high beam. And there's not really a space for one. So on here, I thought that was one, and then that was high, right? At the moment, we'll turn the ignition on. We'll turn the, the light switch on here, look, you ready? So side light, let's go side light only. Now we have side lights, they're here and they're here, okay? So we've got side lights. Then we go main beam. Pating! There's your main beam, right? Up there, that's your main beam. Now, nothing you do with the high beam switch changes anything. But not only that, you can hear a click. There is no bulb for high beam. So I think this is some sort of weird system where I think a regulator changes the voltage of this bulb, makes it higher and lower. 
and then this regulator probably isn't working. I've never ever seen that set up before. This isn't a brand new bike, it's a 13. I've never seen that set up before and it seems annoying and awkward. So I need to make a plan now. I think the easiest plan for me, there are slots in here guys for other bulbs. So you can put, I believe you can put one in here. You see where my hands are here? I think that will come out and that will come out. And then I think we can have, we can make the main lights them two if I can get two side bulbs in there, yeah? And then I can find what wire goes to the high beam switch here, find it and bridge it to here and that will become your main bulb. So you'll have side lights and then somehow, somewhere here, depending on where them grooves go, because they may not go anywhere, you should have a kind of main light. Ideally one down there actually, that would work best, wouldn't it? If I have one side light bulb down there, that would become the main light and then that would become the high beam or keep that as the main light and make that the high beam so that would just add a side light to it um, I kinda don't know how this works so that would be a good light that would add to it that would make it a high beam so I'm gonna have to do some wiring here guys and some adapting I'll show you what I mean though by the side light all I need to do now I think is find out what color wire this is what's the main color wire i'm not worried about the greens the greens are earths check what the other one is it might be a blue here it might be uh, i think let's see i think we can take away what are we taking away so we can take away the light blue the orange and the green their indicators i think it's going to be this dark blue actually that no that's normally all the white so let's see what goes down to here Ah, dark blue down there. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There's more wires underneath here. Right. There's wires underneath there. What do they... What do they do and where are they coming from? That's a white, black and... Power. That's interesting. Maybe there is some other bulb in there. I'm going to have to pop this whole front panel off, guys. You know what? MOT today isn't a huge issue. At least it's sick anyway. I can do an MOT next weekend. It's more important we get this bike finished. I'm going to pop this whole front panel off. So this is a stupidly complex system, guys. What I was asking about was these wires here. See these three? I reckon there is a halo or something in, in here that probably isn't coming on. Or it doesn't power this bottom light because there's a separate hole for that that's not connected. But there are these two holes to the left and right there, you see them? Left and right. Are they the gaps? Are they these? Um, I don't think they are. I, I'm, I'm talking about this hole here, so I can make a bulb there and connect it to the high beam power source. Don't know how well that's going to work. Let me show you what I mean. But I reckon under here, I reckon... Really, you'd need to find out where these three wires go here. Sorry, these um, white, blue, and black. Right, white, red, and black. They're quite thin. I reckon there's something else under here, and it's not working anyway. Uh, so probably not worth the hassle anyway. <sighs> tough one. Tough one. What have we got under here? Nothing. I think I'm going to have to save the day with a bulb there. Let me see if I've got one. So this is what I mean, guys. Simple um, side light bulb or a clock bulb. This came out of the XJ or something. I've got loads in there. It goes into there. actually wedges perfectly in and sits. I might have to put a bit of tape over it for longevity, but otherwise it does the job. Now, I still think that needs to be the main light, and then that needs to come on as well to make it high beam. So I now need to work out... One of them will be an earth. In fact, the brown will be an earth. So the brown just needs to go to a green on the bike, any green, that's easy enough. And then I think the blue goes to here. Is that right, the blue goes to there? I think the white will be the, I think the white will be the switch. 
um, the high beam switch. So, have I got any way of testing that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna test that on this bulb, I guess. Uh, so it shouldn't be on under normal circumstances. It should only switch on. So if I take this white here, I'm gonna connect this to a green and to the white, and it should only come on when that switch is up. Make sense? Let me do that. I'm just gonna splice. In fact, I'll do it on this same pin. I'll splice here and splice here. We'll cut these in, and we'll see if this comes on when that's on high. If that's the case, we've then got our extra bulb to add to our main beam to make it a high beam. Yes. So instead of splicing, just, just push in through the cap. That makes more sense. I obviously thought of that without, um, without telling you to splice for no reason. If my theory's right, and it rarely is, let's be honest. This shouldn't be on under normal conditions now. So under the normal... Oh, for God's sakes, what are we on? So off. So we don't, it's not a side light. It's become a main light. So this obviously isn't... Oh, hang on. Wait a minute, what does that mean? So it means it's there and working, but it's back to front. I don't think that matters. I think a high beam's a high beam. Is that it, guys? Have we solved the issue? Is the switch being down okay for it to be high beam? Is it switched around? Is it as simple as... Do we get anything... We don't get feedback up here either, which is interesting. Uh, is it as simple as switching them? It can't be. So that... But that is switching it back and forward. That can be the only wire. That is switching it back and forward. It's not as simple as turning these around, is it? Right, one minute, I'm gonna swap these around. Switch them around, that shouldn't make a difference, guys. I don't, my wiring's shocking, so I don't know. Oh, hang on. Oh no, nothing happens now. Okay. Oh no, wait a minute, yeah. All right, so I probably just blew the bulb. Uh, yeah, so it's not about the wires being back to front or anything. Great, let me see what I blew. So before you nip everything up, this is your chance to check. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I've done it the right way around, so I'll show you what we have. We have uh, ignition on, normal light on, okay? So we have that. And then the high beam becomes that. And I don't know let me see if it's better with the engine on. Let's see if it's more high beam with the engine on. It's a bit weak, isn't it, for a high beam, that. But because it adds to the main beam, it just, it could be okay. Either that or their class is the wrong way round. What you can do here, guys, is there are two other slots there. You can put two others of these in. So I could have three of these, they could be the main lights, and then that can be the high beam. If that makes sense. Uh, but I, I don't know, I kind of feel like you've got your side lights, you've got your normal light, and then you've got your bit of a high beam. Because I don't think that, because that's going to be rubbish as a normal running light, isn't it? Even three of them isn't going to be great, but then adding that makes sense for that to be the high beam. I mean, what's the worst he says, the MOT guy? It's not high enough for a high beam, or... Or there's something switched with the wires, they're the wrong way round. I might risk this one, I might button it up, risk it and see what he says. It won't be today, it'll be next week. Um, I'm in two minds about that, guys. See, the high beam's not necessarily um, much higher. It, normally, you have a bulb that switches to a, a stronger element, so it'll be one or the other, or you have a slightly weaker bulb, like I've just set up, that adds to the high bulb, so you have a second bulb that comes in and kicks in. Uh, this is my opportunity at this stage to put two more in, because there is an option for that while I'm not buttoned up. And I have got through here and the wiring straightforward enough to do. I'm not sure how I get down to them on the inside. And then that would add three extra lights to the high beam. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it back off 
and have another little look to see if that is easily doable while we've got the wiring all accessible. So I can mess around all day, making new holes and seeing how much more I can add. Look at all these holes, seeing if I can add more light. But sometimes the quickest, simplest answer is staring you in the face. A bulb that has high beam on it. Now at the moment, this bulb won't fit in the slot. It will, but I need to just trim the edges a bit there. And then I'm going to have a bulb here that does all three things. And I'll probably even have a bulb carrier that I can wire in so it looks stock and be in his stock. So I think that's the route I'm going down. We can get rid of this. Yeah, yeah it can stay. Wow, I did a good job on that. Come on. Oh, sometimes I surprise even myself with my weakness. Um, great, I'm going to put that bulb in, see if that works, get that sorted, and I think we've solved our issues. Okay guys, so a fair amount of, of fiddling and, and silliness and messing around. We should have what would be, what appears to be a normal light on um, when I switch the ignition, and then I need the white, which is this. When I put the white to there, that should only come on when the uh, high beam switch is on or off on this occasion because we don't know what's the right way. So at the moment I'm looking for a normal light or not. Did any ignition come on there at all? Beep beep. Oh, I've blown the main fuse. Okay, back down to the battery. Main fuse change. So when I say the main fuse guys, it's it's this one. On some bikes it's a fuse like this, which is a long, here look, like that. And you can see it blatantly blows, it just snaps in the middle. Um, or it could be a traditional car style fuse that you push in, but basically you'd know if that's blown because nothing would come up. The, um, the fuel gauge wouldn't come on, you see, the horn wouldn't work. So I've changed that and, and we're good now. Let's see if what I was talking about was right. So at the moment I expect to have on um, a light. Oh, good, right. Okay, I have a light. Now, I expect to that, for that light not to go off with the high beam. Okay, good, right, so far so good. Now, I expect that if I touch this white to here, it should come on. I'm gonna set you up over here. It should come on. Let me give you some legs. When the switch is on one way or the other, up or down, it doesn't really matter. It should come on, so keep an eye for that. So at the moment we're going to have the little light, but then it should be joined with another light. Okay, let's see if anything... We're not getting any change. There was something. Let me kind of switch the other way. It did kind of appear to. No. What about here? No. Oh, what happened there? Ah, yes. That is doing its job. Guys, I don't know if you can see that. It is doing its job. It's kind of. So that's high beam on, off, on, off, on. Okay, all right. So this, this setup so far is normal, or I've made it normal. So I need to add the final connector on there. That goes on there, that did do its job there. So guys, I just spent a bit of time with Gary. He has the, um, the orange Benelli keyway. Um, he dropped it a little while ago and it's the first time I've seen it since he dropped it. It's hard to explain to people, when you drop a bike, even off its stand, 
the bike weighs a lot. The, the amount of damage on a bike that's been dropped is unbelievable and it is never just what you see. It's not just the bent handlebars. It's the brake levers. It's the clutches, as in the, the whatever side it drops on or the rear brakes. It's the whatever's rattled loose in the engine. It's the electrics. Um, a dropped bike is, is, is a problem. Uh, from here, let's just, at this stage, check everything. Make sure all your wires are back to normal. Check you've got your front light. Check you've got your high beam. Look, you see that changes? That's clear. Look, once again, see that change? That's clear. That's what you need. Check you've got your indicators. Uh, good. Good. We know the side lights are on. We can see that there. So that's fine. I can now nip up this front panel. Uh, you know, completely get it all back together and then I'll chuck on the the top new panel, get that neatened up, give it all a bit of a clean and give it a bit of a spin and we'll see we'll see how we go from there. But at the moment it seems good and and ready. It's a shame I was meant to be going to MOT this morning, but it shows you that these bikes they're, they're complex. Whatever that weird system is there that changes the voltage in the light bulb, that's complex. You'd be so much better off with a light bulb that has two elements, one's higher and one's lower. Um, but it also shows you guys that electrics can be done at home. You can find this problem yourself. And your options are to buy one of them little electric boxes that will probably break again. Or swap the bulb for one that has three pins and do a bit of wiring. There's always other options out there. And you, that's how you save the bikes. So this bike's gone from looking okay and riding okay to looking terrible but riding okay. Let's try and get this bike finished and um, ready for its MOT next week. So at this, go at this guys, at this stage guys, we're just nipping everything up, yeah? Just putting it all back on, bolting it all up, nipping it all up. Because uh, the kind of front end is sorted now. I'm gonna be taking this panel off soon. I'm gonna give this, give this glass a wipe, put some WD on there, give it a good wipe, give it a scrape, get that off. Um, I'm gonna get this off and put a, uh, look it's crumbly, I'll put a coat of paint on that. Put some hammerite on it actually, nice and thick, I'm using hammerite anyway. And um, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be looking alright. Um, front end is fine, no problems there at all. So yeah, just uh, just bolting it back up for now. All right, guys, we changed this top panel. Um, fairly quick and simple, nothing to worry about, but it, it's changed the bike. What I need now is some back to black down here um, to kind of tie it all in, and then it will need a good clean at some point. Back to black is just an oil, basically, it's an oil, a very light, thin oil that keeps the, um, it keeps the plastic oiled and it looks nice. So, uh, We'll give it a bit of a wipe. Um, I was hoping we'd hear from Lisa today, but she has been unwell, so I don't think we will. I bought this clip, actually. That's the kind of last piece of the puzzle. I'll chuck that in. And then I need to take it for a bit of a ride, don't I? See how it actually runs. Um, but it's definitely... It's a big change from that first bike we picked up to this bike now. All these brakes in the plastic and stuff, they really let down these kind of bikes. And I think that was 35 quids, which is fairly pricey, but it changes the bike. It's worth every penny. The original, I mean, you're never going to do anything with that, guys. I'd, I'd rather pay 35 quid and have that. And you have a bike that you can actually save and, and look after and use for a few years. Carb is brand new. You saw that earlier. So it starts and runs and rides well, I say starts and runs and rides. It starts and appears to rev. Um, the reason we changed the carb was because it had that uh, full or quarter problem, didn't it? So it was fine on full full. It was fine on half. It would not manage quarter at all.
and now it does so I think this bike is good to go fin number it's, it had the strip originally sorry guys um, final piece of the puzzle I was just showing John this uh, the fin cover plate zip thing um, it should just pop in and sit in there like that somehow it is the right one I just don't know exactly how it pops in but that's where it sits ah come on I'll work it out I'll take the camera off and chuck some glue on it that was a joke um, I'll pop that on in a minute but that's the final piece of the puzzle uh, I hope that does pop on let me give that a shot